segue into the start of this uh, coaching call, gang, or this coaching Zoom meeting. Welcome. Glad you're here. Great job on starting the week the right way with this coaching session. So I uh, hope you had a great weekend. Uh, ready to, to start the, uh, the week off strong and uh, really have the right focus. So much of our success in life or the lack of success comes from what we focus on, gang. And my goal today is to make certain that uh, I get you all as individuals and as a group of professionals focusing on the right things. Uh, I firmly believe that we get what we focus on and we have the choice every single day to focus on uh, the good or the bad. Um, look, it's, we're in a market that's transitioning. Let's admit that. That's fine. It's okay. Uh, and the question isn't whether the market's transitioning. The question is, are you going to transition? Are you going to deal with the, the, the changing uh, market? Look, the way the business was done the last 18 to 24 months is not going to be the way that it's done uh, in, in some ways uh, over the coming months and potentially years. You know, it's, we may not be getting 15 or 20 offers on a listing uh, and you can't uh, overprice it, quote unquote, overprice it and expect that it's going to sell or to, uh, to see that it goes above list price. You know, we're, we're starting to see those things change. And so as a result of that, we've got to you know, pay attention to the things that we, we control. There are things in life that we control and there are things in life that we do not control. And the good news is this, the things that you do control are the things that matter most. I'm gonna repeat that. There are things in life that you control and don't control. And the good news is that the things in life that you control are the things that matter most. See, you don't control the interest rates. You don't control the amount of inventory. You don't control whether the prices are going up or going down. None of that you get to control, but what you do get to control is how you respond to the changing nature of the market. See, I don't, I don't think it's a buyer's market or a seller's market at this point. It's nobody's market. You know, it's, it's neither one of theirs. What it is, it's your market, gang. It's, it's a message I keep repeating because I want you to recognize. Now look, for as long as I've been in real estate, which is 30 years, which I guess is a long time, but uh, you know, let's just give you some perspective. Let's talk about over the last 100 years. There's nothing that's happened in the last 30 years in real estate that didn't happen the 70 years before that. You know, we have the business cycle every five to seven years. Inventory goes up, inventory goes down. Prices go up, prices go down. It, those fundamentals don't change. There's always going to be... Uh, flux or, you know, change. Uh, that's one thing that's guaranteed is that things are going to change. So it's not a question of whether the market is going to change because it always is. Nothing is permanent. The question is, are you going to do the fundamental things that regardless of what the market's doing, going up, going down, stagnant, regardless of what it's doing, are you going to do the fundamental things that will allow you to be successful? And again, it goes back to what I said. The things that you control are the things that matter most. The things that you control are the things that matter most. So let me ask you this question. How many of you, when you got into the business of real estate, were told, congratulations, great job, you've signed up to be a leader? Well, the fact is, I'm sure that none of you did unless I was the one who recruited you, sat down with you. That's just not normally a perspective that we have in real estate that when you are looking to get a license that you have this mentality, okay, I'm signing up to be a leader. No, you think you're signing up to be a real estate agent, right? And you look to join the board and the National Association of Realtors. I'm, I am an agent. I'm a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a sales agent. I'm a realtor, right? I think that does a disservice because the fact is, yeah, you might have the, the designation as a realtor or a sales agent, right? Or a real estate agent. But fundamentally, gang, that's not what you are. That's not what we are in this business. Fundamentally, what we are is we're leaders. So I just want you to think about this. What is leadership? At its core, what is leadership? Well, I think it's confidence. Uh, it's, you know, having a vision, being able to cast it for other people so that they can see it. I mean, that's what Martin Luther King did, right? I have a dream. He described what his dream was, tried to cast that so other people could see it, so they would, fo so they would follow him. You know, uh, great leadership is uh, good intentions. 
you know, there's a, there's a fine line between manipulation and leadership and its intention. You know, great leadership is problem solving. Great leadership is inspiring people. Great leadership is motivating people. Uh, great leadership ultimately, if I were to sum all of that up, great leadership is influencing people and taking them to the next level, right? That's what all of that is. When you look at confidence, when you look at good intentions, when you look at problem solving, inspiring people, motivating people, casting a vision, taking people to the next level, all of that is about influence, okay? It's influence. That's, that's really, see, most people get into real estate, think they're going to sell homes. That's their job is to sell homes. No, your job is to influence people. That's your job. It's to influence them, to get them to ultimately to choose you versus the competition, to influence their decision, to choose you, to help them through the process of getting to the next level in their life, whatever that is, the next chapter in their life, the next stage in their life. So that's influence. Influence is about changing perspective and therefore then changing behavior. Your job as a real estate agent that's the phrase or the terminology you want to use, a realtor, is to influence people by changing their perspective and changing their behavior so that they do the things that are necessary to help them get what it is that they want. So I just, I want you to think about confidence, think about vision, think about good intentions, think about persuasion, think about problem solving motivating people, inspiring people, taking them to the next level. What do they all have in common? There's one thing that all of those things have in common. Think about that. Anybody want to give me an answer? Chat, type it in the, uh, in the chat box. What, think about it. What do those things have in common? Confidence, vision, good intentions, persuasion, problem solving, motivating people, inspiring people, taking people to the next level. What do they all have in common? Yes, 100% right, Tanya. All of those are marks of a great leader. But if you're going to be a great leader, who's going to, yes, leadership, yes. But if you're going to, if you're going to have confidence, if you're going to have a, a great vision and be able to cast it for people, if you're going to persuade people, motivate people, if you're going to problem solve for people, if you're going to take people to the next level, what is the necessary component in that? What makes a great leader a great leader? Yes, it is their skill set, their skill set of specifically of communication, right? Your ability to communicate a message, a clear message that helps people feel safe, that people want to buy into. You know, the, the reason Martin Luther King had such a great impact, the reason that JFK had such a great impact, the reason that Lincoln had such a great impact, and the list goes on and on. The reason that Oprah Winfrey, for example, has had a great impact is because those people are great or were great at communicating. They were great at communicating, casting a vision. So you think about a Kennedy or Martin Luther King or a Lincoln or a Washington or an Oprah Winfrey. They're all great at communicating. So I, I want you to write this down. Take the time to write this down. The highest paid, the highest paid and most influential people are great communicators. The highest paid and most influential people are great communicators. And that is true in real estate. Listen, the highest paid real estate agents are always going to be the agents who are great communicators. The agents who have the most influence are always going to be the best communicators. You want to make more money in real estate? Influence better. Influence more. Influence to a greater degree. Influence more people. Well, the only way to do that is to be a great communicator. King, I want you to, I want you to write this down because I said in the beginning, we're in a changing market. It's, it's shifting. We're not in a buyer's market. We're not in a seller's market, I don't believe. We're in nobody's market but yours. This is your time to recognize the fundamentals, that what you focus on is what you will get. And gang, I'm here to say, if you want to be successful for the final six months of this year and for the rest of the years that you're in the business of real estate, 
hoping that you're in the business as long as you choose to, not being forced out because you ignored the fundamentals, is to recognize this. Your job consists of six fundamental things, and I want you to write these things down. Your job consists of these fundamental things. If your list, your current list of things that you do in the business of real estate include one of these things, then what I would suggest is you're not doing your job. And if you say, well, wait a minute, John, I, I don't know, I, maybe I disagree, it depends upon what your list is. Well, the question I would ask you is, how much money are you earning? You know, if you're earning a ton of money and I give you this list and you disagree, that's one conversation. But if you're not earning a ton of money, man, I hope you just sit back and listen to what I have to say about this list, because fundamentally it's true. Your job as a real estate agent, number one, is to talk to people. Gang, the single biggest bit of advice that I could give you based upon what the market is currently doing, what the world is currently doing, what real estate is currently doing, whatever might be going on in your life that is challenging or problematic, whether it's personal or otherwise, the number one thing that you can do in real estate is to talk to people. That if you will do that, that so many of your challenges will go away or will become that much easier. Number one, your job is to talk to people. Number two, it's to follow up with people. See, number one, talking to people is about generating leads. It's about finding people you can talk to, people you can lead, people you can influence to help them change their perspective, to change their behavior, to move them to the next level in their life, whether it's to buy a home or sell a home because they need to transition to a smaller home or to a bigger home because the family size is changing or they're moving to another state because they got a job transfer, or they have financial challenges, or they're getting a divorce, or whatever it is, but that you were there to influence them, to get them to see that you are the best person, that you're the lead to help them through this process that is very uncertain to them in uncertain times. That's what a great leader does. So that's about lead generation. But then, just because you had one conversation with them doesn't mean that they're ready to do it. Doesn't mean that, that they're completely confident in you that they're absolutely certain what they're going to do. So therefore, number two, you have to follow up with them. Getting 80%, 75 to 80% of all the opportunity that you're going to find in the business of real estate will come through following up with people. So first of all, you gotta start by talking to the people, right? Door knocking or picking up the phone, whether it's your sphere of influence, FISBOs, expired, just listed, just sold, renters, non-owner occupied, landlords, doesn't matter. But you've got to talk to people. You've got to generate that lead. You've got to find somebody who says, yeah, you know, I've been thinking about it. Or you know what? We're thinking about doing something in a couple of months. Or we're thinking about doing something next spring or next summer, whatever, right? You've generated a lead. There's a potential person who's interested in having you lead them through the process of buying or selling real estate. Step number two, though, is you have got to absolutely follow up with people because they're not going to, in most cases, say yes the first time. It's going to take multiple calls. And Tanya, yes, you certainly may call me. I'll, I'll make certain that you've got my number. You've got to follow up with people. If you're not following up with people, you're missing out on 75 to 80% of the opportunity that you will ever have in the business of real estate. You want to increase your chances dramatically, exponentially, make certain that you follow up with people consistently. That's step number two of your job. Step number three is setting appointments. Gang, did you wake up this morning with the intention of setting one appointment a day? Do you have a standard for setting an appointment every single day? I love it. Marissa said, hell yeah. Good. Gang, the good book says the people without a vision will perish. Do you have a clear vision of what you want and how you're going to accomplish it? Do you know what your job is? It's difficult to achieve what you want when you don't know. First of all, it's difficult to know how to do it if you aren't clear on what it is specifically that you should be doing, right? I watch so many agents get ready to get ready so that when they're ready, they'll be ready. Okay, first of all, let's just get clear about what it is that you want. You know, how many transactions do you want? How much money do you want to earn? In other words, be clear, have a vision. Be clear, have a vision that your job is to talk to people, is to follow up with people, and have a clear vision of how many appointments you're going to set on a daily basis. 
And some of you might be freaking out, say, well, wait a minute, how many appointments each day? How about just one? It's been, it's been a week, it's been two weeks. It's been a month since I've set an appointment and talked to a seller. Okay, I'm glad we're having this conversation because now is the time to set the intention. Remember what I said in the beginning, we tend to get what we focus on. You want an appointment, then focus on that. Set your intention that that's what you're going to do. So when you wake up every day, say, I'm going to set one appointment today, whether it's with a buyer or a seller, and then go through the process of doing your job, talking to people, talk to the FISBOs, talk to the expired, talk to the just listed, just sold, talk to your sphere of influence, talk to renters, talk to uh, investors. I don't care who you talk to, but talk to people. Because I promise you, when, when people find out you're a real estate agent, what's the, the, the most common question that they ask? In my experience, the most common question that they ask is, how is the market? Everybody wants to know how the market's doing. So yes, Yvette, how is the market? Now, they're not asking that question because they want to know if you're doing okay, are you going to survive? You feed your family? That's not why they're asking. I mean, they might care about that if they love you and know you well enough. But they're asking because it's a self-interested question. They want to know, is my home worth more or less? Is it a good time to buy or not? That's why they're asking. So gang, if you are the person who has a clear vision of what the market's doing and you bring to them a, a clear sense of confidence of you know exactly what it's gonna take regardless of what's happening in the world, whether inventories are going up or down, interest rates are going up or down, whether real estate agents are panicking, getting out of the business, getting, none of that matters. All that you need to do is focus on the things that you do control, which includes your message and the job that you do every single day. So talk to people, follow up with people, have the mindset that you're gonna set one appointment a day. And even if you don't set one appointment, but you tried, that's good enough. Because on, on average over time, if you have the intention, you'll set plenty of appointments. And then step number four is to present to people, actually setting appointments with buyers or sellers and then going out and presenting to them. In other words, I hate that word presentation so much, but we use that so often in real estate, but it's it's about having a conversation with them, getting more detailed about what it is that they're trying to accomplish. This morning uh, in a morning descent that I led here in California, we talked about that. There are two fundamental questions that you should be asking in your presentations with buyers or sellers. With sellers, the question should be, share with me, what's caused you to decide to sell your home? What's happening next? That is a fundamental question to your listing presentation or to that listing conversation. Share with me what's caused you to decide to sell your home, what's happening next, and giving them an opportunity to tell their story. The second question that you should be asking in the listing conversation is, I know you want me to sell your home. Share with me, what do you believe that I should do? What are the things that I should do on a daily basis to cause your home to sell? What are the things that you believe that I should be doing that will cause your home to sell in today's marketplace? You want to know their opinion. See, and if you're working with a buyer, the question would be, share with me what's caused you to decide to buy a new home. Give them an opportunity to tell that story. And follow that up with, share with me, what do you believe I should be doing to help you do that? What are the things that are important to you? What are the things that you think that I should do for you on a daily basis that are important as we work together to help you find a home? You want their opinion on these things. Gain clarity about what your job is and what you should be doing on a daily basis and the way in which you should be communicating the message that you should be sharing is absolutely critical. It is the linchpin. It is the fulcrum. It is the center. It is the, the core of your success. And I don't care what the market is doing. Stop paying attention to the doom and gloom and people panicking out there and saying, I don't know what we're going to do. Okay, I know what we're going to do. We're going to focus on the fundamentals. We're going to do our job. And we're going to take to the marketplace and to the people a message of positivity, of we know exactly what it's going to take in today's marketplace to help them buy or sell a home. Because it's still a great time to buy. Interest rates are still historically low. It's still a great time to buy because there's more inventory in the marketplace. It's still a great time to buy because uh, mortgage companies and banks are coming out with programs and, and, and dusting you know, off programs that we didn't need the last two or three years. 
or four years. It's a great time to buy and it's a great time to sell because people are still buying. We're still seeing in some cases, multiple offers and homes going for uh, above list price or at list price. Or even if we're going below list price, that's okay too because homes ultimately are still what? They're selling. So let's make certain we're focused on the right thing. So gang, I want you to, I want you to write this down. Listen to what I'm saying and then I want you to write down, I'll repeat it. Today, I will connect with people, I will offer value, and I will separate myself from the competition. So let me repeat that and you can write it down. Today, I will connect with people, I will offer value, and I will separate myself from the competition. Let me repeat that again. Today, I will connect with people, I will offer value, and I will separate myself from the competition. I want you to think about that. If you're connecting with people, right? In other words, knocking on doors, making phone calls, talking to people. In other words, connecting with them. You, you can't connect with people again, sending them a text. You can't connect with them, sending them an email. You can't connect with them on social media, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all these things. I'm just here to tell you, that is superficial. There is a barrier in between. And it's the, it's the reason you find so many people, right, trying to connect with people that way and never doing it and feeling awkward. I, I feel so bad for the um, for millennials, right, because they think connecting is social media. It's not. And why you watch so many of them still wanting to, for example, wear masks. I, I, I've talked to young people who were still wearing masks that we wore during the pandemic. And I asked them, why do you still wear masks? I feel comfortable doing it, having people not see my face. They try to hide behind a barrier. Well, Facebook and Instagram and other social media pat platforms, they are the mask that people hide behind, that real estate agents hide behind because they're afraid to get in front of people. Gang, don't be afraid to get in front of people. That is your job. It's to connect with people. So get out there and knock on doors. Get out there and talk to people person to person. Get on the phone and talk to people. So today I will connect with people. I'm going to call. I'm going to knock. I'm going to talk to the person in the grocery store line. I'm going to talk to the, the bank teller about real estate, right? Number two, offer value. Well, what is that? Offer value. Well, ultimately in real estate gang, the number one way that you can offer value and ultimately what I talked about, separating yourself from the competition is to be very confident in your ability to lead people through the process of buying and selling real estate and to communicate confidently. In other words, have a message that you're absolutely confident in. In other words, you know what the market's doing, right? You know that inventory is increasing. You know interest rates are going up. You know what uh, a lot of real estate agents are, are saying. And yet, despite all of those things, you know exactly what it's going to take to get the home sold in today's market, despite the naysayers, despite the fact that some people are saying it's not a good time to buy or it's, it's, a, it's a more challenging time to sell. The fact is, it is a great time to buy and it is a great time to sell because you bring a message of absolute certainty to the conversations with buyers or sellers who in today's market need to buy or sell a home. See, we're in a market where people are still going to need to buy and sell real estate. And despite what the market's doing, despite what interest rates are doing, despite the inventories are going up, and it may not be as advantageous now to sell a home as it was six months ago or a year ago from a price standpoint, people still will need to buy and sell real estate. It's inevitable. They're going to have to. And it's your job to get in the way, to be in the middle, to be that person who connects with them, to help them feel safe, to feel comfortable. The process of buying and selling a home is a nerve wracking process. You think it's nerve wracking. You know, you're the professional. Try it on for size as the as the as the amateur, as the layperson who doesn't understand the process and is and is concerned about all the messaging that they see out there on the uh, the media platforms, you know, in television and and radio and online. So it's your job to go out there and connect with people and to offer value, to be that person of confidence, sharing a message of absolute certainty that you know exactly what it's going to take. It's like step aside, I got this. The superhero is now in the room. That's who you are. See, and if you do that, you'll separate yourself from the competition. Again, you have to be willing to go out and communicate with people. Let me, let me just share with you a story about the importance of that. 
It was years ago, I was making phone calls, just listed, just sold calls, calling people in a neighborhood where a home had just been uh, sold. And so I, I called up this household and the, and the lady answered the phone. And of course I introduced myself, said John Syatt, uh, Century 21. Uh, I'm calling to let you know that we uh, just put a home under contract over on, I don't remember the street, Primrose Lane. It had three bedrooms, two baths. I just followed the script. And uh, I asked her if she had any plans on maybe potentially selling her home. And she said, oh no, absolutely not. We're gonna stay on our home. We've been in here four years and we absolutely love the neighborhood. Uh, we love the home. Uh, we're going to be in here a long, long time. And I just continued the conversation. You know, I was curious. Um, you know, I didn't let her answer that, no, they were going to stay in the home and that they were absolutely happy there. I didn't let that unsettle me. I didn't let that knock me off kilter. I just continued the conversation. I just continued following the script. And as I continued following the script, what was interesting is I asked her, well, how did you happen to, to, to pick the area, you know, how long have you been in the home? What caused you to decide to move into the neighborhood? I asked the question, the next follow-up question I asked is, well, if you were to move, where would you move to next? And this was about 10 minutes into the conversation at this point. And she said, well, if we were to move, you know, I, I don't know exactly where we'd move, but if we were to move, we'd move because uh, my husband has knee problems. And uh, he's really having a challenge going up and down the stairs because the master bedroom is upstairs and um, it was so interesting. It was almost as if she had forgotten everything that she'd said to me up to that point because her next phrase was this, her next sentence was this. So we've been talking about maybe finding a home that has a master bedroom on the main level. And I got thinking to myself, wait a minute, you just got done saying that you absolutely weren't moving. You've only been in the home four years. You absolutely love the home. You're gonna be there a long time. And within almost the same breath, she said, and yes, we've been thinking about making a move. Now, why do I share that story with you? Because gang, I just want to remind you that despite what's going on in people's lives or despite what they say, that if you will bring to the situation a sense of, of tranquility, of confidence, of certainty, and just be conversational, stop thinking that you have to be a presenter. You're not a presenter. You're a leader who just simply goes out and has conversations with people. Just ask some fundamental questions. And if you'll do that, you shift the burden from you to them. Because really, the real burden, the real pressure is on the person who has to answer the questions, not the person who asks the question. I mean, once you ask the question, it's like, okay, the hot potato is yours. You know, give them an opportunity to just answer the questions. So the key to that is this, if you're gonna go out and talk with people, you really, you either have to really like people or you gotta to pretend to like people. Now I'm hoping and I'm assuming gang with everybody on this call that you actually really like people. And if you do, then it's gonna make it a lot easier to go out and actually talk to people. So here's one of the phrases that I've used in, in, in uh, the years that I've been in the business uh, that's helped me a lot to encourage me to go out and actually talk to people right? It's this. It's, I really want to know. See, when I ask a question about how long have you been uh, in your home, I really want to know. If I ask them, well, how did you happen to choose this area? I really want to know. If I ask them, if you were to move to, where would you move to next? I do really genuinely want to know. See, I think people sense that. And when they sense that I ask these questions with absolute genuine sincerity, they're more likely to engage in a conversation with me. It becomes less presentational. It's not an interrogation on my part. Where were you the night of January 22nd? No, it's, it's just a conversation about what they're trying to accomplish ultimately and what's going on in their life and how I might be able to help them. It's I really want to know. See, I demonstrate that I care. Demonstrate that you care by asking questions, giving them an opportunity to discuss their wants, their needs, their wishes, their desires, their hopes, and their fears. See, gang, now is not the time to panic. It's not. We'll leave that up to the unprofessional people. We'll leave that up to um, the people who are gonna pay attention to the news media or to the naysayers or to the pessimists. 
See, now is the time for us to pay attention to the fundamentals, understanding firmly what your job is, absolutely knowing with certainty that at the forefront of your mind every single day, my job is number one, to talk to people. Number two, it's to follow up with those people. Number three, it's to have the intention of setting an appointment one day and working towards that every single day by talking to people. And then when I set an appointment that I prepare and go out and I actually have a great conversation with those people, right? And get that home listed or get that buyer broker agreement signed. And if you'll have that single-minded focus of just simply doing your job and focus on having a great attitude and being aware of what's going on, but not buying off on this idea that we're entering challenging times. We're not, we're entering differing times. It's a transitional market. It's just transitioning but you have all the resources, you have everything that you need to go out there and help people. Now is not the time to panic gang or to place blame or to get distracted. Now is the time to take control. So my question for you is, are you going to take control? Are you gonna be clear about what your job is? Are you going to set a schedule where you acknowledge that I need to prospect and set the time to come into the office and prospect for an hour, two hours, three hours? to identify the number of people that you need to talk to, the number of people that you're gonna follow up with, the people who you're gonna follow up with, setting aside the time to, to actually do the follow-up. In other words, put together a working schedule that takes those fundamental principles of doing your job and acknowledges those things, and then executing on that every single day. Again, just, look, if you will do your job, and do it consistently over time. The great equalizer is consistency, I promise you. Not only will you hit your goal, but you will do greater than your goal and you'll do it consistently with predictability and duplication. What I know through personal experience and whether it's been me firsthand or coaching and training others through it, I know that in real estate, that if you will stay dedicated, stay focused, recognize what your job is and fundamentally recruit on that every single day, I promise you, within five to six years, you can become a millionaire. It can happen that quickly because I've watched it done and I've experienced it personally. But you cannot ignore the fundamental. So gang, again, just remember, fundamentally, you're a leader. You're not a realtor. You're not a real estate agent. You're a leader. And your job is to influence people. And the number one way to influence people is to go out and communicate with them, have conversations with them, which means to go out and prospect to go out and to make the calls, to go out and knock on the doors. Just let people know that you're in the business. And if you will do that and do that with confidence and excitement and energy, I promise you, you'll separate yourself from the competition. And in challenging, uncertain times, people will choose you and you'll get the opportunity to lead them to what it is that they want, to the next chapter in their life, to the next level in their life. And it's... What a special charge. What a great opportunity to be able to do that. And the great thing about being in a capitalist society is this. In a, in, a, in a market, in a country where we recognize the principles of a free market, that when you help enough people get what they want, you're going to get what you want. When you do your job exceptionally well in real estate, when you do your job exceptionally well, when you talk with people, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about overseeing the escrow. When, I, when you do your job exceptionally well, meaning when you talk to people and follow up with them, Gang, you're going to get everything that you want, but you have to do your job. So go out and do your job. Go out and do your job. Today is the day to begin to do your job. If you'll focus on doing your job, it does not matter what, the, what is happening with interest rates or what's happening with inventories. You will always have enough business if you will focus on the fundamentals and go out and do your job and lead people through the process. Go out and influence people. All right. I hope this has been a great conversation for you. I've enjoyed it. Tanya, uh, my number is 801-580-8425. 801-580-8425. You're welcome to give me a call. Any of you are welcome to give me a call. I'm happy to help you any way I can. All right, go out there and have a great day. Go out there and be a great leader and influence the lives of others and make a ton of money while you do it. We'll see you next time.